residents of Compton have re-elected Mayor Asia Brown to a second term. Early results have Brown winning with 60% of the vote. Her opponent was former Compton Mayor Omar Bradley, who served from 1993 to 2001. I'm here with my co-host Joe Brizolero. Joe went to Compton and interviewed some of the folks involved in both campaigns as well as voters to learn more. Joe, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. So Joe, give us some background on the race. Okay, so this was a runoff election, um, and it settled a primary election that happened back in April. It was being touted by the press as a generational clash. The LA Times phrased it as a contest between the new Brooklyn and the gangster mayor. Uh, KTLA 5 called it a collision of generations. Um, New Brooklyn refers to Brown's comments that she made in an interview with Elle magazine um, where she basically said that she wanted Compton to be like a new Brooklyn, uh, a cultural hub thriving with economic activity. The gangster mayor refers to Bradley. He he, he denies giving himself this title, but throughout the 90s uh, when he served as mayor of Compton, he continually played up his association with gangster rap icons like Suge Knight and Eazy-E. Okay. Uh, Tell me more about Asia Brown. Well, she took office in 2013 as Compton's youngest mayor. She was 31 at the time. She's received a good amount of notoriety for collaborating with Compton-born stars such as Venus and Serena Serena Williams, Kendrick Lamar, and Dr. Dre. During her time in office, Brown's administration implemented a 15-year plan to eliminate uh, the $40 million deficit uh, that the city of Compton had. Uh, since taking office, the deficit has dropped by $7 million, according to the Press-Telegram. As of recently, Compton was embroiled in the scandal uh, with uh, the deputy treasurer, Galvan, uh, who was arrested for embezzling $3.7 million in city funds. I spoke with Brown's chief of staff, who was quick to point out that the Treasury par- Department does not fall under the jurisdiction of the mayor. Uh, Compton has had multiple issues with the misappropriation of funds, correct? Yeah, so there's been several incidences, uh, including quite notably her opponent, Omar Bradley, uh, who was convicted in 2004 of misappropriation of funds totaling around $7,500. He was using a city credit card to pay for things like golf rounds, hotel rooms, clothing, and in-room movies. He was also charged with taking cash advances for city business, business expenses and then using the city credit card to pay for them while pocketing the cash. The charges were ultimately dropped, which allowed Bradley to run again for mayor, though the L.A. County District Attorney is currently retrying him. It should be noted that Mayor Brown, along with other city council members, were cited for misuse of city funds. Uh, The mayor and city council members were paying themselves for attending commission meetings, some of which were only a few minutes long. Brown had been receiving an additional $4,000 a month as a result of this practice. And this has been a long-standing practice in Compton, uh, like many other cities across the Southland, to pad the salaries of city officials. Uh, this investigation uh, came up after uh, the City of Bell prosecutions, which uh, many of our listeners might remember. Uh, the mayor and city council had stopped this practice after being warned by the DA that charges would be filed if they continued. The legal standard here is that if they have the DA has to prove that the city officials knew what they were doing was illegal. I asked Brown Chief of Staff Melissa Freeney, uh, given the history of misappropriation and theft of city funds, what is Mayor Brown's solution to this problem? Here's what she had to say. The proposed solution, um, about two months ago, we actually got a new city controller. The way the city is set up, unfortunately, a lot of departments and checks and balances are within different departments. Right now, the treasurer department and the controller's department, which um, governs and kind of is the checks and balances for the city, are not within the same department. They're not on the same systems. And so, therefore, it leaves a lot of room for error um, when it comes to checks and balances from the treasurer's department. So, we have got a new city controller, a woman who's experienced um, in cities and uh, municipal governments um, and she's brought a completely different perspective bringing new energy new innovation um, to the systems that we use to make sure that those checks and balances are there um, from a political perspective and from um, the DS city officials are not allowed to have credit cards so back when previous administration was in office they were actually allowed to have credit cards to have their own expenses um, and a lot of times for elected officials and people in position they don't have their own they don't use judgment well to to make sure that they use those cards and things correctly um, since not since the mayor's been in office, but a couple years even before she got in office. 
no elected officials allowed to have a credit card. Chiefs of staff, any staff, we don't have any access to credit cards. Um, so that's been a way to keep it from elected officials. Internally, um, I know we had theft um, in our treasury department by an employee. And so the mayor does not have jurisdiction at the employee level. That all comes from our city manager. We have a new city manager experienced um, who has taken that issue kind of under his wing and working with our new city controller to make sure that those checks and balances are in place. Um, the mayor has always, um, even when she came in office, said it's, it's all about uprooting corruption. And that's one of those things. So the city and the mayor have been completely, completely open to the investigation, um, all levels of the investigation, um, all solutions that have been presented to make sure that this doesn't happen again. So all of those checks and balances and um, things have been put in place since the mayor's been there and since we've uncovered this back in December. Uh, you spoke with Omar Bradley's campaign about this. What did they have to say? Yeah, so I, I sat down with Omar Bradley Jr. Um, he's the former mayor's son and member of his campaign. Deputy Treasurer Galvan did come up, uh, and it seems clear where he's placing the blame. I'm sure you've read about the $3.7 million that has gone missing. Okay, now, if a city has to have a budget yearly, an annual budget, how can your numbers and your target numbers and what you have based your new numbers on from the previous year, how could they be right if you have an amount that large missing? These are the things that we have to get serious about because it begins to make you question, has there been an audit? If there has been an audit, then Compton has a serious lawsuit against the people who have come in and done the professional audits. Because if they've audited and they have not caught the $3.7 million, then we need our money back and then some. On top of that, you know, it wasn't $3.7 million when it was Mayor Paradin and it wasn't $3.7 million when it was Mayor Bradley. This is something that's been going ongoing. So we need to know, how did you miss it if you are the candidate of transparency if you are the person who's going to fix our community uh what were some of the other issues that came up during this race uh well potholes and the state of compton's infrastructure were huge deals in this election and researching this story i drove around compton quite a bit and i can tell you that based on my personal experience this is actually a serious issue in compton mayor brown told the press telegram that when she took office around 90 percent of compton streets hadn't been repaved in over 30 years she backed measure p which was approved last year by voters measure p increased the sales tax in compton by one cent and is expected to generate eight million dollars in new revenue which will go towards infrastructure improvements mayor brown's slogan for this race was let's finish the work uh, i asked melissa farini um, how measure p was related to this we passed Measure P um, in 2016, which is all about infrastructure, fixing our streets, fixing our parks. And so that was a really huge endeavor. It's actually um, a measure that the mayor um, personally kind of took under her wing to get the community buy-in. The residents voted yes on Measure P. Um, and so we have those funds now. We have the plan at the table. And so implementing that, right? So unfortunately, not unfortunately, but it's, it's by coincidence that um, the fruition of this Measure P plan to, re to redo our streets happened to fall in the midst of a re-election. Um, um, but this is kind of the process. It takes a very, very long time to get where we are now, where not only do we have a plan, but we actually have the funds and a dedicated source of funding to make this happen. A lot of people can say, hey, we want to fix the streets, let's fix the streets. But how? Right. Again, using her expertise and looking at best practices across the nation on how cities use their own funds to generate revenue and generate monies to do um, very large scale infrastructure improvements. Um, the mayor has done that. So we have the money. We have a, a source, a, a stream of income. Um, and then we also have a strategic plan to make that happen and so fulfilling that plan right we have this eight million dollars extra a month to redo our streets and so um, fulfilling that plan and actually putting the boots on the ground and for people to be able to see the fruit of that labor is a part of finishing the work uh, Bradley maintains that the benefits of measure P have not come quickly enough all right thanks for that report Joe uh, we'll end the segment with some voter responses and their hopes for the next four years in Compton all right cool so my thing is, though, L.A., you can't have Compton back. We want to keep our city. We're proud of our city, you know, and we want to keep it our city for us, you know, Absolutely. for everybody. 
I mean, and look, and like people, you know, and, and what hurts me sometimes, I hear a lot of Latino people say that we want to keep it black. No, welcome. We want to keep it a city, but what we want to have it where it feels like you're at home. It feels like you're welcome, you know, and no matter who, yeah. you know, and respect our city. Because, like, some people, you see them in trash can right over here, trash can there. Yes, throw it on the ground. Why not? Because it's not clean, you know, so. You know what I mean? If we change that energy within communication, for example, when I jump on the bus, you know, you just see people dogging you or, or looking down on you, you know. Here and there, here, you see some elder people smile at you. But what's up with us, the youth? You know, how are we changing the situation? What are we doing? You know, me personally, I walk around here with my head up high because I didn't been through a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I'm not proud of the situations I've been through, but I can say I've learned from them. Right. And I just go upon that. Thank you so much for talking to us, man. Anytime, brother. Andy, have a good one. Yep. Thank you, man. Better, community, better communication with the community and the, and the local government and uh, having our streets paved a little bit more better and just overall just making something, making something back again.